What's up, everybody? Yeah, yeah. Welcome to the Mike Dolce Show. I appreciate you guys being here today. Mostly, this is going to be a live Q&A, so feel free to ask any questions, whether you're on YouTube or on Facebook. It's good to see you guys, and I want to kick this New Year's off into something special. A lot of times, you have questions, concerns, challenges, areas you need to troubleshoot. Maybe you're lost, or you need that bit of motivation to wake up to every day. So whatever I can do to help you, we're going to get there. I want you to set lofty goals this year, 2022. We went tw through 2020. Everyone in 2020 said, oh, man, I can't wait till 2021. Everything's going to be different. We get to 2021, and what happens? Nothing's different. In fact, most people regressed. They added weight that they really didn't want. They lost energy that they really needed. Financially has been a net loss. They're not where they want to be in life, and I want to help you get there. So hopefully in this quick chat, I'm going to talk about fat loss briefly, and I'm going to answer your questions, uh, whether it's TRT like Robert has or um, Frank. What's up, Frank? Good to see you. Some New Year's results and things like that. So feel free to leave any questions in the chat, and I'll bust through them. Now, fat loss. We can all lose fat. Almost every single person listening to this, statistically speaking, is either overweight or obese. Over 70% of the U.S. population is statistically overweight or obese. More than 50% of the population is considered to be obese. This is not a compliment, my friends. Now, maybe you are in better shape than most of your friends, and this happens a lot. There is a sliding scale to hell here. Many people are in better shape, or many of our followers anyway, they're in better shape than their peer group. And because of that, they feel like they're more fit than they really are. Because you might look better in your bathing suit than all your unhealthy friends does not mean you actually look good in your bathing suit, but more importantly, does not mean that you are healthy. Number one, we want to focus on health. On our way to looking awesome in our bikini or performing at levels athletically that we want to be at, the number one, the most important aspect is what we call the health and habit phase. The first four weeks of any diet program, any exercise program, any lifestyle program, we call it the health and habit phase. You're establishing healthy habits. You're ridding yourself of unhealthy habits. You're getting used to going to the grocery store, thinking ahead a few days of what you need to be eating, of preparing your meals and having them available to you, of etching out the time in your schedule to get that 30 minutes or 45 minutes of low intensity, steady state cardiovascular activity, or maybe high intensity resistance training just a few times throughout the day. You're prioritizing sleep, recovery, as opposed to simply just running and gunning. The first four weeks of any lifestyle program should be considered the health and habit phase. From there, we really start to build momentum and can transition into slightly more aggressive um, types of diet and exercise programs if you scale up to that. So think the first four weeks, don't put too much pressure on yourself. It's the health and habit phase. You're getting used to the new routine. You're setting goals for yourself. Now, this not, is not an excuse to be lazy. This is simply allowing yourself the proper bandwidth that you need to gain that momentum, to get your life organized so you can really start to see great progress as we move forward because we have January. And then we have February. Well, guess what? In March, the sun starts to peak out. In April, the sun is out. It's tank top and summer dress weather. By the time it's May, we're damn near naked at the beach. You don't have a lot of time when it's we're discussing about the, the summer body, right? We can use the summer body as a far-off muse, but again, our health is more important than aesthetically what our abs look like. It's very hard to have and maintain a nice midsection if you're unhealthy. So we focus on the health first. We establish the health and habit phase first, 
And then we get more specific. You want rounder shoulders and thicker pecs and tighter waist or a, you know, more curvaceous lower body. Well, that's where February and March really come in because we've started the health and habit phase. We've started to mobilize a lot of that stored body fat. We've dropped a lot of the water weight. We've seen pretty dramatic changes in those first four weeks. Very common with those following our program to lose 15 to 20 pounds in the first four weeks. Whether you're following our three weeks to shredded program or not, 15 to 20 pounds in a four week period of time is not uncommon for those who have the weight to lose. And a little hint, most people have that weight to lose. Remember, over 70% of the adult population in the United States is considered to be overweight to obese. Well, we want to get you down to healthy criteria. What is the healthy body fat criteria? Before I answer the questions, guys, that's you below 15% body fat. Ladies, that's you typically below 25% body fat. Once you get to those ranges, well, now you're looking good. You're looking shapely. You got a little couple, a couple extra pounds that you could lose and tighten up. But by and large, you have dramatically reduced your likelihood of all-cause mortality. Once we get below 15% body fat guys and 25% ladies, your health outcome dramatically improves. The healthier you are, we know the easier it is now to start living a more fit, active, healthy lifestyle that then compounds the way you look and the way you feel. It gets much easier once we start with, again, that four-week health and habit phase. Now, let me answer some questions for you guys here. Paul Case says, Happy New Year, Coach. This week marks four years since I found your channel right on. As a result, in the last four years, I've been my healthiest, happiest, and most focused. Paul, thank you for being here. What we try and do is provide you with the most honest, evidence-based, and actionable information to dramatically improve your life. That's why I'm here. That's what we do, and hopefully we can help you. Feel free to click the links below. There's more information, products, and services, and you know all sorts of cool stuff we have down there for anyone interested. Frank, what's up, Frank? Haven't caught a live chat in a minute. Well... We're back with the live chats, my friend. Good to see you, Frank. Rob, what's up? Good to see you. Robert Estrada says, I'm 49. Should I get on testosterone replacement therapy? Well, number one, Robert, this is a, a question you should have with your doctor. You need to sit down with your doc and say, hey, doc, I'm not feeling too great. I seem to be losing muscle. I don't have the same vigor I once did. I'm not getting good sleep. Sexually, I'm not quite as aroused as I once was. What should I do? Now, if that's the case, you might be an early candidate for testosterone replacement therapy. Your doctor will then run a full blood panel. And looking at the blood panel, your doctor will help you determine whether or not TRT might be right for you. What we say here, and we work with many clients who are following TIT protocols under the supervision of their doctor. We fit in with the exercise program. We fit in with the supplementation program. We fit in with the nutrition program. And we will work with your doctor to find the best protocol for you. That being said, we have quite a bit of experience here. But what we always suggest, number one, is are you getting seven and a half to nine hours of sleep per night? Are you, con can, are you controlling the controllables? Number one is your sleep. If you're not getting a good amount of sleep, TRT doesn't really matter, right? If you're not managing stress in your life, well, TRT doesn't really matter. If you're not eating a healthy, high net nutrient foods intake, well, TRT doesn't really matter. If you're not exercising consistently and intelligently, well, TRT doesn't really matter. If you are doing all of those, you're getting good sleep consistently. Monday through Sunday, you're getting seven and a half to nine hours per night. You're exercising 30 to 45 minutes per day five, six, seven days per week. You're eating high net nutrient foods on average four times per day. You're managing stress and you're not letting the woes of life pull you down and you're still sluggish. And you see that your total and free testosterone is still very low. Your estradiol levels are still very high. Well, then, then maybe you will dramatically benefit from TRT. So that's a great question. Um, and we can also, my team, my dietitians and I, we can have deeper conversations with you on this. Um, Zoom says, here's a question. What fruit could I use to have a healthy fruit intake by putting them into smoothies? My end goal is to be toned with low body fat and a good amount of muscle mass. Well, Zoom, we have smoothies that are inside our programs. You can click the link below and look at our four week or 12 week personalized diet and exercise program. Use promo code transform, save 20% right now. 
Um, and this is completely personalized diet and exercise programs built by my team of registered, registered dietitians, exercise physiologists, and myself, along with our, our amazing web scientists team that, that you'll see our platform is absolutely incredible. This is all at thedolcediet.com. We have a ton of smoothies in there. Also, we have handbooks that are hosted at thedolcediet.com. You can click the handbook button and you can start looking at some of the smoothies that we have. And we even have free smoothie recipes at thedolcediet.com. We have over, over 1,200 free articles. You can click any of the links below to get there. Now, to answer your question, what fruit is best? All fruit is good. We don't discriminate with fruit. Like we might make some smoothies with watermelon, which is delicious, or maybe ripe bananas. Maybe it's blueberries and strawberries and blackberries. Maybe it's apples. We have, we have a lot of, of whole food smoothies that we use inside our program, whether you're following our three weeks to shredded program, which is how to lose 21 pounds in 21 days, or our living lean program, which is focused on losing more like 40 pounds over a 12 week period. Um, really says your thoughts on water loading in collegiate wrestling with weekly weigh-ins. We work with tons of collegiate athletes, high school athletes. Um, we work with tons. I don't even know, probably, uh, I don't know, four or five dozen or so individual athletes and families we work with right now. And we work with quite a few teams and clubs, um, on big picture. If anybody wants to hire me and I'm happy to do talks to your teams, we can do remote talks, which works really well right now. I, I've spoken to, I don't even know a few dozen teams around the country, high school and college teams. Um, and then we have one-on-one -on -one clients also. So I, I have a lot of experience with this now to answer. Thoughts on water loading in collegiate wrestling with weekly weigh-ins. Well, this is difficult. The more you weigh in, the less effective water loading becomes. Water loading is, is a, a, a short-term um, protocol that you use. The more you use it, the less effective it is as far as big fluctuations in body weight. What we do with our athletes, we build baseline. Baseline is probably closer to five to six liters per day for the average wrestler that we have, high school or college. They're drinking about a gallon, gallon and a half or so per day. Some water, or some, some tea, some black coffee. We kind of avoid everything else. Even Gatorades and Sportage, we avoid that stuff. We want more of consistent water balance with our wrestlers. And usually it's not just one. Usually you're weighing in two to three times per week. And that is the expectation. You cannot adequately water load and deplete when you're, you're weighing in two to three times per week. We're looking for more maintenance. And the last thing, all my combat athletes, my collegiate and, and high school wrestlers, I want you walking around at about 4% above your weight class. Any more than that is not beneficial, long-term not beneficial. And most of you will have your worst matches when they matter most. That's tournament time at the end of the season. Robert Estrada, you got it. Um, EC says, Mike, do you recommend creatine? Absolutely, I do. I love creatine. And when you buy creatine, guys and gals, think of creatine monohydrate. It's the original version of creatine. It's the least expensive version of creatine. And it still remains the most, if not as effective as any other higher priced version. Just a simple creatine monohydrate works extremely well. Might cost you $12, $15 for a full month supply at about five grams per day. And a little side note, why do I say monohydrate? Because all creatine, the, the vast majority, I think it's like 80 to 90% of the creatine in the world comes from one manufacturer in Germany. So every label, every brand that you purchase of, of crazy different prices, they all get it from the same manufacturer in Germany, right? So the lowest price creatine works well. I like a company called Jarrow, J-A-R-R-O-W. I'm just a customer. I don't get paid. They just have high quality um, supplements. Um, any way of checking for high cholesterol without seeing doctors, you can actually click the link below. If you go to letsgetchecked.com slash Dolce, use the promo code Dolce. You'll save between 20 and 40%. Let's get checked dot com slash Dolce. It is an in-home blood testing service that we do endorse. We use a lot of our clients use. It's very easy. The little box gets sent to your house. You go in your bathroom. It takes two minutes. It's a pinprick. You put it in the tube. You put it back in the self-addressed stamped envelope. You leave it on your porch. The UPS or USPS uh, driver comes back, gets it within three to five days. You have your results. Awesome. Let's get check.com slash Dolce promo code Dolce. There should be a link below that. That's a great way to get your cholesterol, get your cholesterol, get your testosterone, um, COVID tests, even all available. Let's get check.com slash Dolce promo code Dolce. It just makes it easy. Um, I have a few kits just sitting in my house right now. Cause I, I go through different phases where I really want to focus on, um, how my life is affecting me. 
you know, like uh, I'm running and gunning and I'm super busy and I'm stressed out and holiday season or I'm training really hard and heavy, very consistently. Usually I can see my test. The heavier I train, the more consistent I am with training intensity, the more I'll see my testosterone drop. And I have to find ways to really focus on recovery. So that's a fun one for me. Rob says, I got your email hoping to set up one-on-one -on -one private coaching. Guys and gals, if you're interested, I offer one-on-one -on -one private coaching right now. If you go to thedolcediet.com, there should be a link below. Click on online coaching. You can hire me for one month. It's a 30-day program. I believe it's $200 for the 30 days where we talk specifically on the phone via text message, audio message, uh, video uh, messages back and forth. Send me like, you know, you're squatting or you don't know how to do a push up or you're having a problem in some area, a quick tour of your kitchen. You don't know what to cook. You don't know what to eat. You want to lose weight, but you're struggling and you're having challenges at home or you're working shift or maybe even it's the financial and the business side. So it's a brand new platform that we have access to, uh, which, which offers a very specific technology that allows you and I to speak in near real time. So a lot of my private co coaching clients have already onboarded over to that. They absolutely love it. I have a few spots left for the month of January, and then you'll be waitlisted until February. So every month I'll open new spots. You can be a part of it. Um, and sometimes you just need to get on track. You need someone to be looking over your shoulder a little bit to help motivate you. That is what I do. At my very best, I am a motivator, I think, more than anything else. I will keep you on track. So if you go to thedolcediet.com, you click the online coaching link at the top of the site, just set it up. Let's just work. Let's work together for a month. I guarantee you I will over-deliver. I will dramatically over-deliver. Most of these bodybuilding prep coaches charge somewhere between $200 and $500 a month to send you a template program that says eat egg whites, um, dry oats, and asparagus and do some, some traditional bro split that you can download off of the internet right now. It, it, they won't give you nearly the amount of personal attention that I do already. So again, check that. If you're interested, Rob, check it out for sure. Anyone else, check it. Travis says, what's a good test booster or are they crap? They're crap. The best testosterone booster is a lifestyle dedicated on improving your health. That means getting seven and a half to nine hours of sleep per night. That means minimizing all external stress and negative self-talk. That means exercising consistently and intensely 30 to 45 minutes at a clip five to seven days per week. You can alternate lower intensity with higher intensity back and forth. 30 to 45 minutes a day is ideal and eating high net nutrient foods. So you have no deficiencies. Nutrient deficiencies will, will dramatically drop your testosterone. So in order to be optimal, you need to live a very clean, healthy lifestyle. And then from there, I wouldn't worry about going on some, some crappy, ineffective, over-the-counter testosterone booster. They don't work. If you find you have a true medical need for testosterone, sit with your doctor, get a, a testosterone prescription for less money than you're going to spend on most of those over-the-counter test boosters anyway. Most TRT scripts will wind up costing you anywhere between like $20 and $120 per month. It's insane how inexpensive that is. Um, Paul says, Coach, what do you listen to during workouts these days? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm an old guy now, it feels like, because I'm listening to a lot more financial podcasts. It's like when I have the time, I listen to a lot of financial podcasts while I'm exercising. It keeps me in the zone. I think because I have a very analytical brain by nature. I'm a numbers guy by nature. Um, and I, I think it just really helps tune my brain up. Um, I, you know, when I go back and forth to just like the loud rap, you know, like um, East Coast rap, like 90s rap. Um, or, you know, rock like Metallica, Pantera, um, music like that, kind of like the older school, heavy, not quite, not quite metal, I would say, but that, that high, you know, heavy rock borderline metal, that's what I'll go to. But even then, um, I don't get the same kick I once did. So when I'm training alone, I do a lot of financial, a lot of crypto, um, just a lot of general investments, um, type of, of educational podcasts. And it keeps my mind really locked in. Um, and you know, I'm, I, I use a board, you know, in, in the gym, I have a board here. So I, I have all my lifts listed. I know exactly what my percentages are and it's very easy for me to compete with those numbers. That's the way I can really ensure progressive overload. Um, bullfighter, what do you think of perfectly healthy people getting the jab? Me personally, I don't know that that makes sense. It doesn't make sense for me. It hasn't made sense for me. 
Um, and this is working with my doctor. I have more, my, I have so many different blood tests that I get done because I have access to it. I have amazing healthcare. Um, and I'm very proactive with my doctor on, on getting comprehensive blood work done. I out of pocket pay uh, quite a bit. Let's get check.com of course, um, is, is a great way for me to aggregate a lot of my blood work plus my health history. I have, I have Excel files from the last almost 12 years now, 11 plus years of every blood work I've ever done. It's all downloaded onto Excel files. Every time I've ever been sick, any medicine I've ever been prescribed, which is like absolutely none, maybe some anti-inflammatories for an injury here or there. And I don't even take that stuff. Point being, I have a robust health history. I have an amazing um, team of doctors that I've been working with for the better part of a decade now. And we determined it made no sense for me. I'm never sick. I'm never sick because I have strong immunity because I live a lifestyle that helps boost my immunity. I have zero comorbidities. I am at the, the very lowest, lowest, lowest risk factor, although I do have heart disease, diabetes, and stroke in my family. So I have a few landmines in my genetic code that have actually made certain medical interventions more risky for someone like me. So I only say this because you must do your own due diligence. You must sit with your doctor. You must go through all of your old health data. And then you must make the most informed decision for yourself. And I'm actually going to do a, a couple videos on that um, information on, on that topic soon too. I, I try not to be polarized because I don't want to be. I'm, I'm, I'm pro-education here. How do I get my lower body, my lower back healthy? I would go down the Stuart McGill. Everyone, if you have a back injury, I'm going to do a whole series on back injuries. Also, if you have a back injury, go down the Stuart McGill rabbit hole on YouTube. You need to watch about 10 hours minimum of Stuart McGill's videos to really start hearing a common theme. I also have Stuart McGill's book, The Back Mechanic, which is excellent. Every coach should have it out there. Anyone over 35 should have this book, The Back Mechanic. Uh, go down that rabbit hole and educate yourself more. If you have a specific question, feel free to ask me. I've, I've dealt with many back injuries, have many friends that are, are chiropractors and exercise physiologists, and uh, work with athletes who've had a, a wide variety of injuries and therapies to correct those. Do you think eating potatoes with the skin on is healthy? Yes. I heard they contain more vitamins than other parts. Yeah, that's great. I do all the time. So Keeb says, hey, coach, what test should be included in regular blood work and how frequently should you do these in a year? That is a great question. Let me see if I can. Hold on a second. Maybe I can pull this up for you to be at even greater help. All right. Let me give me a minute here. I'll just briefly try and answer this question and I'll jump back in. Um, share screen here. All right. You know what? I can't do that right now because I have a brand new computer here. So my apologies, uh, apologies, guys and gals. I was going to show you the Let's Get Checked site. Um, but that being said, what blood work should be? Well, you, you should get your lipid profile. That matters. What's your LDL? What's your HDL? What's your triglycerides? What is your, your, your APOB uh, markers? What do those look like? What are your C-reactive proteins? What are your, your markers of inflammation? Your markers of inflammation. This matters. This is something that you definitely want to get looked at. Um, general wellness here, microthyroid, liver test. Um, I'm actually just looking at the, the Let's Get Checked site right now. Um, vitamin D and vitamin B, I would get those checked. I do get those checked. Um, diabetes, your A1C level certainly matters. Your C-reactive protein, absolutely. Guys over the age of 35, I'm going to start getting my colon um, tested. I've already, I get, I get my colon, you know, blood work tested uh, consistently. And I also uh, recently had an upper and lower endoscopy at 45 years old, which is a little young to have it done, but it's never too young to have diagnostic material. Again, I go above and beyond to make sure I have this information available. Uh, with your cholesterol, you can get total tr uh, triglycerides, HDL, LDL. Um, you can also get your HB, A1C done all here um, at letsgetcheck.com. So those are just a few guys. Also, you want to get your testosterone, your total, your free testosterone, your SHBG um, tested, your estradiol tested just to see how you're doing. Again, I said vitamin D and vitamin B. Those are, I believe, are very important. A lot of people are walking around in a fog simply because they have low vitamin B levels or they assume they have low testosterone when really they have low 
low vitamin D3. That's something you need to get checked out, especially in this era of um, viruses and such. I hope that helps. Viv, what's up, Viv, Mike? What's your thoughts on alkaline water? Alkaline water, by all ways and means, is inert. What does that mean? Excuse me. Well, most of the alkaline water that you purchase is no longer alkaline by the time you get it. It might be alkaline by the time it comes out of the alkaline machine. And then once it's put into these plastic bottles, this isn't alkaline water. This is just a plastic bottle. These bottles are actually porous. Did you know that? These bottles are porous, which allows a free flow of gases to escape and come in. So to come in and out, therefore, the, the, the pH balance of the alkaline water actually changes over time, I had a, a very expensive um, alkaline machines built to put into my house from a company who sponsored us, you know, five, eight or so years or so ago. And we actually would test the water. It was, you know, coming out of the machine. It was slightly more pH balanced. If you would wait 30 seconds or 30 minutes or an hour, the pH balance would, would turn into that of, of traditional tap water. We say is just get purified water. That, that's the best way to do it. What's the best way to structure strength workout program? Dan, if you haven't tried yet, I would consider the push, pull, legs format. Upper body push, upper body pull, lower body, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and just rotate through. Take your day off. Some people will take a day off, you know, three on, one off, or go six on, one off. That's up to you. I'll typically program days off more around like a heavy leg day or a heavy back day. Um, and I like to run the push pull leg six days straight on many rotations. Big monkey says, Hey coach, what are your thoughts regarding pork? I noticed there's really no pork recipes in your cookbooks. Not really a fan of pork. Um, I don't think pork provides anything beneficial that a certified Piedmontese grass fed grass finished steak does not to be honest with you. Um, I think pork is rather inferior when you look at the total amount of amino, amino acids available and the relatively high saturated fat content. There's just too much extra fat that's unnecessary and non-beneficial. A little fat's okay. A little fat's great. We would much rather um, higher cuts of beef, of wild game, maybe like a venison, which is a little leaner, an elk or a moose if you have access to that, or fish salmon and tuna and such pork is is lower considerably lower on the list big papa says hey uncle mike how can i lose fat and get stronger at the same time i'm trying to up my squat press and deadlift but i also want to lose fat around my belly i love that any fat loss program that we start you on our goal is to gain muscle people say well that makes no sense you can't gain muscle and lose fat at the same time well clearly they don't know what they're talking about so the whole goal is to lower your total body fat percentage not to specifically lower your total body weight now what if you weigh 200 pounds at 10 percent body fat you lose 20 pounds hey that's great but now you're 180 pounds at 10 percent body fat you actually haven't lost body fat in fact you've actually gained body fat You've gained body fat relative to the amount of muscle mass that you've lost, in our opinion, the way we look at this. I'd rather you be 200 pounds at 10% body fat and go up to 202 pounds at 9.5% body fat. I'd rather you slightly increase total body weight and reduce total body fat percentage. So hopefully that helps, Big Papa. Um, Gabby, I'm obese at 405 pounds, female, sedentary, 29 years old, 5 foot 8. My registered dietitian recommended I eat 2,150 calories a day for two pounds of weight loss. Is this good? What do you recommend? Well, that might work. That might work. You're 405 pounds eating about half of that um, in calories, 2,150, would support someone who might naturally weigh closer to 200 to 220 or so pounds. I would not necessarily disagree with that out of the gate, but Gabby, I don't know you. I haven't done an eval of you. We haven't run you through an intake. So anything I say right now is just general information. I'm happy to hear that. I'm happy to hear that you are working with a registered dietitian. I think that's excellent. Um, but I would look to spread your meals over what we call the four by four, which is four meals spread about four hours apart, four times per day. The four by four, it's easy to remember. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and a smoothie or shake, typically right around workout time. If you can fit that type of workout or that type of nutrition plan into your lifestyle, 
Life becomes very easy. This is what I said in the beginning of this video, the health and habit phase. Many of our private clients, we start them on the health and habit phase in the four by four. I just want you eating four meals a day. That's it. Lean, green, and clean. Lean proteins, green vegetables, clean burning carbohydrates. About four hours apart makes it easy. We're reducing variability, right? We're starting to get a little bit of rhythm. Chicken, steak, fish, turkey, eggs. That's fine. Lean pro they all fit lean proteins, variety. White potato, sweet potato, quinoa, rice, oats, blueberries, great clean burning carbohydrates. Mix and match any way you want. That's fine. Green vegetables, whether you're eating spinach or broccoli or asparagus or chard or colored vegetables, that's fine. You know, green is, is really any vegetable. If you're eating those basic, delicious, healthy meals in about the same size, spread about the same time throughout the day, well, now all of a sudden you're making progress. You're getting rhythm. You have momentum. You're removing all the variability of gorge yourself and then don't eat for a while and eat really crappy food and then kind of eat something good. Who knows? Eating two hours and six hours and no hours and 12 hours and back and forth. Then you're really strict with your diet. Then you blow with your friends over the weekend. That doesn't work. That never works. Eat about four times per day, about four hours apart, about the same size, delicious meals. We're not calorie restricting here. We're just building habits. Once we start there, it becomes very easy, very easy to take back control of your life. Jason says, Dolce knows, yes, lost 28 pounds in 21 days. He will over deliver. Jason, I appreciate that, brother. Jason absolutely crushed it following our program. Lost 28 pounds in 21 days. How awesome is that? And that is not rare. I, I got to say it's individual results may vary, but if you have the weight to lose our program, our system, our coaching will get you there. The Dolce Diet is the most successful weight management program in the history of combat sports. There are many, many, many amazing teams in this industry and ours stands apart as being the most successful. That says something. That is a testament to the science that we follow, but the integrity of the coaches who work individually with these athletes and clients as we go through. If anyone is interested, click the links below this. You can work one-on-one -on -one with myself or one of our dietitians in the online coaching, or just simply start your own four-week or 12-week personalized online diet and exercise program. It is the total body transformation program at thedolcediet.com, the four-week or 12-week Plus, I'm here all the time to help answer any questions. Plus, on Instagram. Plus, we have our, our client support team and our tech team, and everybody's always available. We have an online support group. It's a face, it's a private Facebook group that everyone who joins our online platform at vdolcediet.com, you get an automatic invite to join our private support and coaching group inside Facebook, reserved only for members of our site, which is awesome. So, if anybody's interested, we have it for you. We have the great stuff for you. Um, Andrew says for the breakfast bowl, what's the difference between oatmeal and oat bran? I've used both, but don't really know the difference. They're the same and they're different. And it changes the, 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 the palatability. It changes the texture. It slightly changes the protein, the carbs, the fiber, the vitamin B and, and iron. It, it slightly changes the ratio enough that variety is good. So I'll have steel cut oats. I'll have whole rolled oats. I'll have quick oats. I'll have oat bran. We'll change it all the time. I'll have blueberries. I'll have strawberries. I'll have blackberries. I'll have, I'll have raisins. I'll have sliced banana. I'll have raw honey. I'll have organic maple syrup. We love, we work within principles. We want a lot of variety. That's why we say it's not a diet. It's a lifestyle. I want you to learn how to eat well. I'll use almond butter one time and maybe crush walnuts with the maple syrup. I'm in my oatmeal another time with the bananas. Oh, it's so delicious, right? With or the raw honey or maybe some blue agave, maybe no extra sweetener at all. Maybe I'll just use the, the natural interplay of the berries as a natural sweetener. These are great ways to eat basically the same meal, but slightly different. Remember the four by four, what I just said, lean, green, and clean. We use these same concepts, same principles to plug and play. So we have tons of variety. We'll do an overnight oats with it. Sometimes we'll cook a big, big pot of it for just the family. Sometimes we'll do it in like little, um, the, the cupcake tins. So there's like these nice, and it almost comes like a like an oatmeal muffin. These are great ways, and it's like the identical thing. These are great ways to dramatically change the presentation, the texture, the mood of your food. 
while not blowing your calorie and macro targets. Ulysses says, I am in sales, often running and gutting. What food should I eat if I have to get fast food such as Chipotle? You are starting the conversation as a negative. So you are only giving us the option of failure. This is very common, Ulysses. I work with some very famous people who mentally feel the same, act the same way. And let me deconstruct this for you a minute. You're basically saying, I'm so busy, I can only eat crappy food. But I want to eat the best crappiest food there is because I really want to be healthy. But that's not true. If you really wanted to be healthy, you would say, I'm a busy person. I need to prioritize my nutrition so I can achieve my goals and live my very best life. I want to be even more productive with my, my energy, with my output, because I'm so busy and I want to start freeing up time in my life that I don't want to waste thinking about what food I'm going to eat. I'm a very busy person also. I might be as busy or more busy than you. Certain times of year, absolutely I am. That being said, I still don't go to Chipotle. I don't go to fast food. Sometimes I'll go to Cave, a little paleo place in town, and I'll get myself a beautiful turkey burger with grilled onions and a massive salad on the side and some bone broth soup. Maybe sometimes I'll go to the From Seed to Sprout, the vegan place, and I'll get this massive kimchi salad that I'll just devour. I'll, I'll get that as, quote, fast food, but it's never bad food. It's always great food. Most of the time, though, I'll bring my food with me. I made a massive stew last night that had chicken and cucumber and zucchini and butternut squash and, and cabbage and onion, um, a couple other things in there made in, with a bone broth base. I just put it in my slow cooker for four hours, set it, sat down, watched some TV with my wife, and it's ready for me. That's what I ate today. Cost me zero time. Less expensive than Chipotle, for sure. Ulysses, so that's the answer. Let's not set ourselves up to fail. Set yourself up to succeed, my man. And this is what a lot of you, if you want to work with me one-on-one -on -one with our private coaching, go to thedolcediet.com, click the online coaching, and consider it. It is a one month. It's a true 30-minute relationship between you and I, and I can help overcome a lot of this stuff for you in real time. Hey, uh, Rita says, hey, coach, heading to the gym and listening. Thanks for the motivation. Much needed. Lost 30 pounds so far. Heck yeah, Rita, 30 pounds down. I'm so proud of you, Rita. I'd love to hear which program you followed to get the 30 pounds down and what was maybe the most um, powerful tip that you used to make this change. Um, Turk says, hey, Mike, can you talk about the best way to pick up ladies at the gym? Yes. Let me take a sip here. The best way to pick up ladies at the gym is to not pick up ladies at the gym. Nobody goes to the gym because they want to be sexually harassed. Guys and gals. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying you are going to sexually harass somebody, but I'm saying when we go to the gym, we're going to the gym because we have work to do. We're going to the gym to better ourselves. We're going to the gym to stay focused. The best way for you to, quote, pick up girls, or I should say to gain positive attention from the opposite sex would be you being respectful, you being diligent, you being hardworking, you being clean. This matters. Ladies will appreciate that. You must be clean and well put together, manicured, groomed, spray bottles and wipe downs, organized, not stinky. That matters. You must be focused in the gym, head down, Put your work in. The ladies will see that. They will respect that. I make no eye contact with nobody at the gym. I'm a happily married man 21 years now. But still, I make no contact with anyone in the gym. If somebody needs help, if they need a spot, I am 100% there. I'm not there to engage. I'm not there to make friends. I go to the gym to get work in. Like I am a surgeon scrubbing up ready to go to work. Before and after the gym, then maybe there's a little time for a little bit of socialization outside the door. Prior to that, absolutely nothing. Honestly, I'm not trying to pick up girls in the gym. I'm not suggesting anyone pick up girls or guys in the gym. I'm suggesting you craft an avatar of yourself that is so goddamn desirable, the girls will pick you up. They will go out of their way to get your attention. 
they will ask what your Twitter is, what your Instagram is, if they could send you a message, if they can DM you. Women respect confidence. They respect self-control. That's the most important thing here. So the less you care about getting their attention, the more they will be interested in gaining your attention. That would be my strong um, Uncle Mike um, bit of advice to you. Um, Adrian says, hey, coach, you referenced 45-minute workouts. Is there any negative to slightly longer and specific workouts? Not at all. 45 minutes is, is about the sweet spot. I, I like to say, if you can train intensely for more than 45 minutes, are you really training intensely? What, how much energy do you have left? Now, you can stretch a workout a little bit longer. You can do a more progressive dynamic warm-up. You can hit a really cool, good cool down at the end. You can hit forearms and neck and calves and some other things and stretch the workout out. That's fine. But in general, 60 minutes in and out of the gym. 45 minutes is the meat of the workout. Max, if, you, if you're doing more than that, me as a coach – having coached thousands of humans over the last, since 1993, 97 professionally, what's that, 24, 25 years now? Lord knows how many humans I've coached. If, if, you, can, if you can train more than 60 minutes, I mean, I'm, I've been in D1 wrestling rooms and you know, it's, it's like you can take your time and you ease in and warm in and drill and do some seminar moves and things like that. But when it's time to go, we're talking about go time, baby. And also the rest of your life, who really has time? Who I don't have more than 60 minutes to get a workout. I got, I got stuff to do. I want to get focused. I want to get in. I can get most of my work done in about 20, 25 minutes. I spend a little bit of extra time doing, you know, specific core work, prehab work, things such as that. So I hope that helps. Andrew, do you think you can make a video specifically for high school college wrestlers that are weighing in up to three or four times per week? Andrew, yes. I'm going to screenshot that. I will do a video. I'll try and do a video on that tomorrow. That should be helpful for you guys. Dan Kuda, what's up, my brother? Good to see you, Dan. Paul Chalk. Um, hey, brother. Hope all is well. Keep doing the good work. Can't wait till we link up again and make this transformation happen, brother. I cannot wait. I cannot wait, Paul. Let's crush it, my brother. Hey, Coach uh, Alejandro says, why are you not training any more fighters in the UFC? I am busy. I'm not interested. I think it's probably more appropriate. Um, for quite a long time, over a decade, I was the most um, um, attentive, most high-profile trainer in, in all of combat sports. I traveled the world. I was on the road on average 250-plus days per year after year after year after year. The three years prior to the birth of my oldest daughter, who's now six, I was on the road over 280 days per year, as proven by my tax returns. Just, just think about that. 2012, 2014, no, 2011, 2012, 2013, and then my daughter was born in early 2015. So the, the three, four years prior, it was 280 plus days. I traveled the world, been on every continent, I've been to hundreds, hundreds of UFC events, worked with the world's greatest athletes for multiple world titles and multiple main events. Very rarely were we not the main event for almost an entire decade since 2005 when I was hired by Randy Couture's Team Quest to be the head strength coach of that team. Well, that's great, and I loved it. I loved every second of it, but at the same time, I, in 2014, my wife and I decided it was time to have a family, and I wanted to be home with my children. I wanted to wake up. I wanted them to wake up with Daddy home, and I wanted to them to go to sleep at night, every night knowing that Daddy's home. To me, that was very important. I grew up in a very broken home without a father and, and mom was, was working and never there. So I didn't want my children to grow up like that. But I was also able to build a business and establish a lifestyle that allowed me to be very flexible with my business decisions and the way I operate my businesses. I own three different businesses. And my ability to work with the community, to work with you guys very specifically, to provide value-based products and services for a much larger population than just very specific and very needy athletes. Now, think about how needy those athletes are individually. And the last is the um, ROI, the return on my investment of time, was very little. 
Now, in order for me to be working with these athletes, it took a ton of my personal time. It took a ton of time of our registered dietitians and different members of our team for very low relative price points. So it made no sense for us, for me, after about 2014 or so, once the athletes started to retire, I just didn't pick up new athletes. And that was a very considered decision between myself and my wife. But I will say now my business is the biggest, the largest it's ever been. We're able to work with more people globally than we ever have. And I have more time to myself to be home with my children, to be a, a member of my community. I volunteer here locally in the community. I do tons of volunteer work now. And some of you have benefited from some of that privately. Um, so that's the answer. And thank you for the opportunity. Now I do consult still. I do consult with members, with, with, with the UFC, with all the major organizations. They call me. I consult. I do a lot of one-off work with individual athletes and coaches and teams who might be struggling. So I still do contract work. Um, I don't want to say names, but one of the most famous, famous combat athletes of, of the year 2021 one of the most prolific athletes of in the, all of combat sports very much wanted me to work with him. And I said very clearly, I'm happy to answer any questions. I am not happy to get on a plane and travel. I don't care how beautiful they were going to put me up in an absolute mansion with expenses and, and, and a driver and the whole thing. That sounds great. I love it. But that means I'm not waking up where my children are. I'm not going to bed where my children are. And that's a deal breaker for me. That's real talk. Some of you who know that's, that's real talk. I said, I said, I'd rather answer your questions for free. Talk to your chef, talk to your strength coach, talk to your manager, talk to your girl. I'd rather do that for free than get paid a very high rate to leave my family. I'm good. Life is good. So that, that, that is the true answer. Uh, what's your TRT protocol? Well, TRT protocols change wildly. It's all based upon lifestyle and blood work. You must get your blood work done. And this is something that a lot of the people on TRT, they do. They'll, they'll get their blood work done one time. They'll get prescribed TRT and then they'll, they'll take whatever the doctor says. It might be 100 milligrams a week. It might be 150 milligrams per week. It might be 200 milligrams per week. It might be 300. I know doctors that are prescribing 500 milligrams of testosterone cypionate once a week. I know some doctors that are prescribing 100 milligrams of testosterone cypionate once a month. Horrible. That's what our team does. Our team works with you, the individual patient, the individual client, but also we liaise with your doctor to help understand what is the best protocol for you lifestyle. This initially works best with consistent blood work. This is where let's get checked.com. Um, comes in, but also many of the, you, your doctors will run low cost TRT or a testosterone, um, total free testosterone, SHBD, estradiol, even vitamin D3, preg pregnenolone, DHEA. Our team will look at that and we'll help you find what is the most effective dose, the most effective lowest dose. That's always what we look towards. Um, so I hope that helps. So each person is very specific. What's up, Kuda? Good to see you. Um, still lean five years after introduced to the Dolce way, bro, five years, man. It's been five years, Dan. That's awesome. Good to see you. Dan Kudis is a Dolce diet certified coach, by the way. Uh, we have a new DDC, a Dolce diet certification fitness conference coming up in March. The mastering the weight cut seminar will be the end of January. That will be announced soon. That will be a three hour seminar mastering the weight cut. You'll need a life. Okay. Amy, what's up, Amy? My future goal of the day is to learn more about crypto for investment. Where would you go to get a good basic intro about this? I would listen to Raul Paul and Michael Saylor. As much information as you can listen to on Raul Paul, who's more of an Ethereum bull, and Michael Saylor, who's much more of a Bitcoin bull. Those two guys are great. I believe they put out honest information. Michael Saylor, Raul Paul, go down their rabbit hole and stick pretty closely to them. There's a lot of bad information in the crypto finance space. A lot of it is, is pump and dump um, where, where some of these creators with massive audiences will start to hype up a specific coin, a smaller crappy coin maybe that they're holding on to. They get it in when it's dirt. They'll build it up to their audience. Their audience will start to buy it. Price will start to inflate. People will then start to YOLO in and the creator will then sell. 
after you know many time multiplying their initial investment and then you'll see the crash afterwards very common in, in youtube crypto so i would stick with with michael saylor who's more of a bitcoin long-term holder and Raul paul um who's more of a macro investor but he's focused on the the um adoption of ethereum right now which is interesting i have crypto information i'm happy to share also i'm, I'm a bit of a student of the game um amy so i can help answer also well it's on joe diesel rigs i'm a big fan of rigs i'm buddies with rigs um i once uh spent an entire day in an airport um, at the Southwest Gate with Joe Riggs, and we just swapped stories. We were there. I think the flight was canceled. We did a show in LA on H the old school of Boss Root and Kenny Rice HD Net Inside MMA. We were both on the same show. We go back to the airport, and then our flights were canceled. So we wound up sitting there all day long, just shooting the shit, chatting. I, I like Joe Joe Riggs a lot. Um, this is fun, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. I'm enjoying. Welcome back. Welcome back to the live Q&A. We're going to have a lot more of these. Guys and gals, leave any comments below, especially once this video posts. Leave comments below this video. If anybody wants to timestamp these concepts or the, the timestamp for me, leave comments below. I'll give you something. I'll give you a coffee mug or I'll do something. I know Dave B. The Legend used to do that for us. Uh, but if anybody here wants to kind of help them be a moderator of the channel, Man, that'll be huge also. I'll find some way to, um, to, to, to be grateful and thankful to you. If, if, but you have to be consistent. You have to be pretty damn detail-oriented, um, and we'll figure it out. But I'd love for some to go through, timestamp these, slap them on up there, and uh, you know whatever we can do to work together, happy to do it. Castle Iron says, does calorie expenditure matter? Should you eat less, exercise more to lose weight? Well, you actually said two different things. There, there's a few different concepts. And one is eat more, which is, you know, eat more calories, exercise more, burn more calories. Or you can eat less calories, exercise less, burn less total calories, and you're still looking for the same basic deficit. When we look to calorie deficits, we're only looking to cultivate maybe a 300 or so calorie deficit per day. We want slower, smaller calorie deficits, but we look to increase our calorie deficit through exertion. So let's say me at 200 pounds, I take in 3,000 calories per day, which is about average. My average day is about 28 to 3,200 or so. Now, if I'm doing that, I'm, let's say I'm taking in 3,000 total calories per day, but I want to start leaning out. I'm going to eat exactly those same 3,000 calories, but I'm going to add in maybe an extra 30 minutes of walking. Maybe it's three 10 minute walks throughout the day. Maybe it's one 30 minute walk. Maybe I just start to add a little bit of extra to what I'm doing throughout my day. I start focus on a little bit more neat non-exercise um, activity thermogenesis, which is, you know, burning more calories by really not doing much more except moving more. If I'm here talking, I'm moving my hands like this. At the end of the hour that I'm talking, I'm going to wound up having burnt quite a bit more calories. So again, we look to increase our calorie deficit through expenditure. That way we do not end up in a total nutrient deficit because we can only cut so many calories before our micronutrients and phytochemicals are affected. That's our calcium, our magnesium, our phosphorus, our vitamin B6, our iodine, our folate, right? Once you're like, you're eating 3000 calories a day, you're good. Maybe you go down to 2400 calories. You're still pretty good, but then you go to down to 1200. And now you're hitting all these deficits. We avoid those deficits. Um, Hector says, good idea to move the breakfast bowl closer to my workout window, five or six. I wouldn't. No, but I think breakfast bowl fits really well early in the morning. You should be good. Andrew says, I lift, I've listened to stories by Chael P. Sonic saying after his weigh-ins, he always had a burger and Mexican Coke but then hear conflicting stuff by you. Not an important question, just always wondered. Now, with Chael, we would go through our normal rehydration protocols. And then for every athlete, we have their ability, once they get past about six hours or more, depending on the health of the athlete, we get their digestive up and running. They've been able to use the restroom completely. They've likely broken a sweat. We've, we've ensured their level of health then we might allow something. So if Chael's having a burger, I remember many times, Chael did have a burger, but it was a grass-fed burger. It was homemade um, French fries. 
Now he loves his, his Mexican um, Coca-Cola in a, a glass bottle and that's fine. That's more of a psychological, emotional benefit for a high performing athlete on the eve of competition, which helps emotionally stabilize and normalize them. Um, but again, what Chael Sonnen does is not what the rest of the world can do. Adrian says, coach, any noticeable positive observations with your private clients from a mental health perspective since the onset of remote work that we can all learn from? Thank you again. Adrian, great question. Yes, I will say, I believe all of the personal interactions, engagements that I've had have been tremendously positive. I am a positive person by nature. I'm a, a motivator by nature. I'm a glass half full individual by nature. A lot of my clients come to me with problems, with challenges, with areas that they need help on and my ability to go all in and work with them and find these positive solutions really manifests a very healthy and happy relationship. So I've seen dramatic, dramatic positive energy flow back my way, which is why we continue doing this at such a high level, which now we've, we've taken our, our traditional 30 minute consultation program and we've opened it up to a 30 day total online coaching portal. If anyone's interested in that, you can click the link below, go to the Dolce diet.com. If you're interested in the online coaching, um, this is a tremendous benefit that I absolutely love. I get so I get so excited about this and my ability to work with with so many people in such an easy interface has been amazing. Um, Daniel says, just got my workout done. Mike been eating earth based fresh fruit since high school. Your first cookbook helped slingshot me as a young man. Thanks, brother. Daniel, thank you so much. That's really sweet. I appreciate that. Now, I was a young man also. You know, I was uh, when I was 26 years old. I was morbidly obese. I weighed 282 pounds. I went to my doctor for a general wellness checkup. I got my, my blood work pulled. I um, had my, my blood pressure, all the tests. And my doctor, Dr. Lau, tiny little 98 pound, four foot six Asian lady, pounds her finger in my chest. We were eye to eye. I was sitting down in a chair. We were literally eye to eye, but she was brilliant. Pounds her finger in my chest. She said, what's wrong with you? You are a stupid boy. What are you doing to yourself? What is the point of, of all these big muscles if you're not going to be around to use them? I was blown away in my mid-20s, and she was absolutely right. I was focused on being a power lifter. I could squat 800 pounds, bench press over 500 pounds, deadlift over seven. I was doing bent over barbell rows with good form, with over 400 pounds consistently. And I was overeating dramatically. I was abusing my body in the name of sports nutrition. And that moment on, I realized completely, Dr. Lau was absolutely right. I was completely wrong. Shame on me. I knew better. And I immediately made the flip. And I focused on longevity-based science. And that was the birth of our Living Lean program. I personally went from 282 pounds all the way down to 169 pounds at sub 5% body fat. All the pictures are out there in a relatively short period of time. And then on the cover of Three Weeks to Shredded, which you can, it's over there actually, the cover of Three Weeks to Shred It, it might be one of my most jacked periods of my life. I was 198 pounds at 8% body fat. Big, full, strong, ripped. You could see the vascularity in, in my midsection, right? I went from 282 down to 169 and rebuilt myself back up to 198. And right now I float around usually between 202 and 212, depending on what I'm doing in my life. So Daniel, I understand completely and I appreciate you, my friend. Jose says, you are the man, coach. Always consistent. That's all we got, right? Consistency, baby. I'm going to tell you the truth. Whether you like it or not, whether it makes me money or not, doesn't matter. I'm going to tell you the truth. The most honest, actionable, evidence-based information to add value to your life. That's why I'm here. That's what we do. That is the, that is the goal. Any thoughts on Dave's Killer Bread? I eat that and Ezekiel. Yeah, we have, we have it in-house too. My kids love Dave's Killer Bread. You know, um, they're not really fans of the sprouted grain bread, but again, they don't eat it every meal, every day. You know, we'll go through a loaf of bread. Usually we'll get a loaf. honestly, we'll get a loaf of like Dave's in our house and we'll wind up throwing out about a third of it because it goes bad after about a week or so. But you know, when the kids want a little bit of, of, of peanut butter and jelly sandwich or like a grilled cheese, when we do like our French toast, um, we'll do that with a sprouted grain. Uh, when we like do just regular to any toast, We'll do sprouted grain, but sometimes kids, they just want soft bread and uh, we'll use the Dave stuff for that. 
Paul says, hey, Mike, what do you think about intermittent fasting? Do you think it can help me? I've had bad eating habits and I'm in three, and I'm 300 pounds. Paul, could it help you? Sure. Any calorie deficit can likely help you. Long term, my expert opinion is it probably won't help you because it does not teach you the healthy habits you need to be consistently successful. This is where I would point you towards our living lean program. Exactly what I just said. I'm five foot 10. I weigh 282. You weigh 300 pounds. We're about the same size. I would assume I was wearing a triple extra large t-shirt and I lost 112 pounds, 282 to 169. I went from a triple extra large t-shirt down to a medium t-shirt that was baggy in the waist. So it was super tight up top, but it was baggy in the waist. Now I'm a, a full large Maybe. So to answer your question, Paul, I would strongly suggest you check out our 12-week living lean program. Use my promo code transform. You'll save 20%. You can click the link below. It's the number one rated online personalized diet and exercise program. Paul, we will teach you how to eat real meals, real food all day throughout the day, not just starve yourself, gorge for one meal, and then hope you've burnt enough calories that you'll lose a little bit of weight each day. Ours is an educational program. So, and I would, str I would strongly suggest it, uh, Paul, thedolcediet.com, use the transform promo code, save 20%. Um, and then you'll get invited to join our private Facebook support group where people, hundreds, if not thousands of people from around the world, all members of the site that are on there, coaches, uh, dietitians, team members that are on there answering questions and support, supporting each other. Uh -oh. Viv, thanks, Viv. Um, Adrian says, sorry for triple dipping on questions. That's cool, man. I'm, I'm here, Adrian guy. I'm, you know, I'm here. Um, in terms of crypto, why do you have conviction in it as an investment? What theme do you agree with? Well, that's actually a great question. So there's two different things right now. I look more towards Bitcoin as a long-term long -term store of value simply because Bitcoin is finite. There are only a specific number of Bitcoin that are ever created. There will never be any more Bitcoin, Bitcoin created. And that Bitcoin has proven over an 11 year period of time that there is perceived value in it from the community. When we look at the adoption rate, we see the adoption rate is nearly threefold each year, which means if we have a million people that are, are you know, uh, Bitcoin holders this year, next year we will have 3 million. The year after that, we will have 9 million. The year after that, we will have 27 million. And I know we're already far past those numbers. So the adoption rate is massive. The adoption rate of Bitcoin is greater than the adoption rate of the internet. So if we think just based upon that and we focus on supply and demand, we understand with a limited supply and an ever-increasing demand, the price of Bitcoin most likely will go up and it seems to have been going up. Then we look at Ethereum. Ethereum is different completely than Bitcoin in that Ethereum provides real world use cases for let's say NFTs, non-fungible tokens, for other areas of, of, of communication, of digital um, communication, digital relationships. These are built on the Ethereum network. Now, I do not fancy myself as an expert. I am someone who has done, I believe, due diligence. And anyone in the crypto field probably can listen to me and say, yeah, Dolce has a pretty decent understanding of how this works. Now, I also understand the principles of great investors like Warren Buffett, of Jack Bogle, of Ray Dalio, of Kathy Wood. Some of my um, mentors in the financial world, in the investing world, I'm more conservative by nature. And with that, I understand that a very small percentage of your investable net worth can be allocated into the more speculative cryptocurrency market. What does that mean? Well, that means if you invest, let's say 5% of your total investable net worth, which means if you have $100, you invest $5, simply 5% into cryptocurrency, let's say it's Bitcoin, and you lose it all, it goes to zero. Well, you still have 95 of your $100, but cryptocurrency has grown at such a rapid and exponential rate. I believe Bitcoin has gone up on average 200% per year over the last 11 some odd years. So if we have that, that small 5% allocation, we can see that that 5% in a relatively short period of time will more than double your total net worth. 
right? So if, if that, let's say 20X, and I think the thought is Bitcoin might 20X over the next 10 years. Well, that means in 10 years, you can actually double your total net worth at a 5% allocation, which is a very small total percentage of your total net worth. And if you lost it, you wouldn't even feel it. So hopefully this is helpful for me. Crypto is speculative. Now I do teach and personally invest in 401ks, Roth 401ks, 529 um, educational saving funds for your children, looking into IRAs as they are appropriate to you, having very traditional saving buckets, real estate. I'm a real estate investor. I want, I want appreciating assets that cash flow. That is real estate. Real estate to me is a much better investment than cryptocurrency, but cryptocurrency also has a very possible high upside. You do not need a massive allocation in order to yield great re results from a small allocation in crypto. So that is just one of my, you know, kind of my thoughts as, as I'm here speaking with you. Mo says, Coach Mike, what do you think of carb cycling for weight loss and athletic performance? Well, if you understand and follow our three weeks to shredded program, if you're following our three weeks to shredded program, we are running a concurrent calorie and carbohydrate cycle. What does that mean? That means your calories are going up and down as your carbohydrates are also going up and down. So you might have a higher net carb day on a lower total calorie day or a higher total calorie day in a lower net carb day. So these are very specifically, very strategically built into the three weeks to shredded program, which is how our athletes are able to lose 21 pounds in 21 days, get as lean and light as, as humanly possible while still maintaining a dramatic amount of muscle mass and preserving their athleticism because our athletes have to compete at world-class levels 24 hours after weigh-ins. Anyone who's interested in three weeks to shred it, you can click the link below, go to thedolcediet.com, start the four or 12 week personalized diet and exercise program and use my promo code, transform, save 20%. Andrew says, heading off Mike, but just wanted to say thanks for wrestling. I used to be the guy that could barely walk but now the diet has made my cuts way easier. Andrew, that means everything to me, bro. Thank you so much. And that matters. I understand. You know, I grew up in a wrestling room myself and I, I still work with a lot of the athletes now. And I understand wrestling is, is such a brutal sport. It's brutal because most of the athletes suffer to such a degree. They don't take good care of themselves because they don't know any better. And that's what my team and I are focused on is allowing athletes to compete healthy. Hector says, Dolce, you are the truth. Glad to see or glad to hear you are still killing it, even though you're not as much in the spotlight. I got turned on to you back in the Rousey days and I'm always cycling back around. Hector, I appreciate that. We are here. It was, it was so cool that we had the ability to work with such amazing athletes and prove our science, prove what we focused on our entire careers, my team and I, because it's not just me, I have a team of registered dietitians and exercise physiologists. We have PhD candidates that constantly cycle into our research team. We have amazing web services and tech support and client services. We had an amazing team here of about 20 or so humans that all work inside the Dolce Diet family. It's been an honor to work with such great athletes and actors and actresses, the actors and actresses, we typically sign NDAs on that our, our decision. I want to, and this comes from experience, any coaches out there, I want the, the actor, the actress to sign the NDA, the high net worth client to sign the NDA or to have me sign an NDA. So they, they can tell me really what's going on. They can tell me really what's going on with no fear of me ever telling anyone, you guys don't even know who we work with. Right? You don't even know who we work with. You don't know anything, any of the stories, any of the stuff that we deal with, any of their health issues, any of their, their lifestyle inconsistencies, any of their relationship problems, any of their, their career challenges. You don't know any of that. But it has a dramatic impact on their physical fitness, on their athleticism, on their energy, on their aesthetic, the way that they look, the way they feel, the way they perform. So we're, we're just happy to be here. I'm just happy to help people, right? All people. That, that's what we're here for. So thanks, Hector. Ambassador of Trans. Hey, Mike, when calculating maintenance calories, do you only count lean body mass or the fat mass as well? And are the calipers the best most affordable way? I'll answer that first. Calipers are crap. Calipers are garbage. Calipers don't work. Calipers are prone to hardware error and human error. Calipers throw them out the window. 
Get a bod pod. You can get a bod pod test, which is air displacement, anywhere for about 50 bucks or so. Usually you can get a pack of three for $99, maybe a buck 50, and you get them done every six weeks. Bing, bang, boom, done. Perfect, right? Get the bod pod done. That's the easiest way to do it. Next, when we help calculate maintenance calories, the easiest way is a hybrid of the Harris-Benedict equation. It, it, it's a hack. Simply take your body weight times 10. I weigh 200 pounds. I need to take in about 2,000 total calories per day. About. Now, am, am I 10% body fat? Am I 12% body fat? Am I 8% body fat? That doesn't matter. I need to take in about um, body weight times 10, which is about 2,000 calories just to maintain my body mass while at rest. Now, the more vigorous I exercise, the more busy I am at work, that number needs to go up because I'm burning more energy. And we make very intelligent exchanges in order to allocate for that. Now, me personally, I weigh 200 pounds. I need to eat about 3,000 total calories to maintain my general body weight with all the energy, activity, and exertion that I have built into my day. I hope that's helpful. Guys and gals, thank you all for being here. You are absolutely amazing. This has been a great live q and I'm going to be doing a lot more of these Q&As into the future. So please look for them. Subscribe to the channel if you have not. Give the video a thumbs up just to really help us with the algorithm. And leave any questions below. I'm going to shoot a bunch of videos throughout the week. Short little three to ten minute videos where I can answer each one of your questions in a very uh, a unique and specific manner. So leave questions below this video. Let me know what you're looking for. If I didn't maybe go into something deep enough, I'm happy to do so. And then if you wanna be a moderator of this channel, help me with some of these chats and maybe uh, with the timestamps and things like that, please let me know in the comments below. You can DM me um, on Instagram and uh, I'm happy to, to make it with your while in whatever way that we can. But thank you guys for being here. Until next time, boom.